St. Mark's Festival 2020 Kindergarten Audiobook Lesson 1 My Church, the Fruitful Vine, the Holy Bread on the Altar Lesson 1 My Church, the Fruitful Vine, the Holy Bread on the Altar Learning about the Holy Bread on the Altar teaches us about the joy of our Church. The Church is the house of God. When we grow in the Church, we always live with our Lord Jesus Christ. We all know what the Holy Bread, Corvana, is, and we really love to eat it. When the Holy Church is made for the liturgy, the priest chooses the best one to become the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Bread, Corvana. 1. It is a perfect circle. 2. Has one big cross in the middle and twelve small crosses around it. 3. It has five holes around the cross. 4. It has words in Coptic that mean Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal. Why does the priest choose the best holy bread? Just like our Lord Jesus Christ was perfect without any sin, the holy bread must be perfect without anything wrong with it. After the priest chooses the holy bread, it enters the sanctuary. This holy bread that is chosen enters the holiest place in the church, the sanctuary. The priest places the holy bread on the altar. The altar. The altar is the table in the middle of the sanctuary. The main altar in the church is usually named after the saints of the church. The altar can be made of wood, like the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, or made of stone, like the tomb of our Lord Jesus Christ. The altar is anointed with the holy Myrun oil. The altar can only be used for the prayers of the church. On the altar you will see the paten, the throne, and the chalice. The paten carries the holy bread that will become the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. The throne holds the chalice with the wine that will become the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The picture on the bottom left is the paten. The picture on the bottom center is the throne. The picture on the bottom right is the chalice. Our church teaches us to respect the sanctuary. Before the priests or deacons enter the sanctuary, they take off their shoes, prostrate, which means bow down, and make the sign of the cross, then stand still and quiet. We should be praying. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. Psalm 84, 1. The Lord protects our church, the Good Shepherd. Lesson 2. The story of the Good Shepherd teaches us that God protects his children and the church. Our Lord Jesus Christ said about himself, I am the good shepherd, John chapter 10, verse 11. A shepherd takes care of the sheep and names each one of them. The sheep know their shepherd and only listens to their shepherd's voice. The Lord Jesus Christ knows each one of us by our name because we are his children. Just as a shepherd takes care of his sheep, our Lord Jesus Christ also takes care of us, his children. We know his voice and obey his commandments. A shepherd feeds his sheep good food and enough water until they are filled and satisfied. Our Lord Jesus Christ knows what we need and gives us everything we need at the right time. A shepherd leads his sheep and always protects them. He sits at the door and makes sure no one takes his sheep or hurts them. Our Lord Jesus Christ protects his church and his children as he promised. I, the Lord, keep it. Isaiah chapter 27, verse 3. The church is well-rooted and strong. Lesson 3. King Josiah holds fast to God's words. 2 Kings chapter 22. The story of King Josiah teaches us to read the Holy Bible and obey God's teaching to keep our church strong. The church and the children of God are strong, and we obey what God teaches us in the Holy Bible. If we do not follow God's teachings, we will become weak. Josiah was a young child who loved God very much because his mother taught him God's teachings since he was very young. Josiah became king when he was just eight years old. He continued to obey God's teachings just as his mother taught him. 
He also listened to Hilkiah the priest, who helped him rule the kingdom. When King Josiah grew, he saw that his people were worshipping statues instead of God. They forgot all of God's teachings because they stopped reading and teaching God's word to their children. King Josiah was not happy and started to teach the people what was right. He ordered his soldiers to break all the statues so that people would only worship God. King Josiah began to rebuild the house of God. While they were rebuilding, Hilkiah the priest found the Book of Law. The Book of Law had God's teachings in it, and it was lost for many years. Hilkiah was so happy and returned the Book of Law to King Josiah. King Josiah gathered everyone in God's house and read the Book of Law to them. He told them to obey God. The people promised to only worship God and obey God's teachings. King Josiah was able to bring the people back to God and to teach them to do what is right. The lesson is we need to read the Holy Bible every day. The memory verse is, Yet I do not forget your precepts. Psalm 119 verse 141 Lesson 4 We are the branches of the church. Saint Athanasius the Apostolic, the Defender of the Faith. Synaxarian, the seventh day of the Coptic month, Bashons, May 15th. The story of Saint Athanasius teaches us that we learn a lot from the Church, and it keeps us strong. Saint Athanasius was born to pagan parents who did not worship God. His mother made sure he learned about lots of things. This made him very knowledgeable. When Pope Alexander saw how smart St. Athanasius was, he taught him the Christian faith and baptized him. After that, St. Athanasius went to live with St. Anthony and stayed with him for a long time to learn God's commandments and his love for us. Pope Alexander ordained St. Athanasius a deacon and made him his disciple. Every day he knew more and more about the Holy Bible and the teachings of the Church. This kept St. Athanasius strong in the Christian faith. At that time, there was a man named Arius who was not listening to the church's teachings. Instead, he started teaching others his wrong ideas. He told the people that the Lord Jesus Christ is not God. He was weak in the Christian faith, and he will make others weak too. The church refused his wrong teachings and had a council, a big meeting, in a city called Nicaea to discuss Arius' wrong teachings. Bishops from all countries attended the council, including Pope Alexander who took St. Athanasius, the deacon, with him. St. Athanasius knew the teachings of the church very well. He stood in front of the council and corrected Arius' wrong teachings with verses from the Holy Bible. St. Athanasius told them that our Lord Jesus Christ is God and was born of St. Mary to save everyone. Sadly, Arius only believed his wrong ideas. The church had to keep Arius away from the church to protect God's children from Arius' wrong teachings. We too need to always learn and listen to the teachings of our church so we can be like St. Athanasius and defend our faith. The memory verse is, But you must continue in the things which you have learned. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 Lesson 5 a Taste of Eternity The Sacrament of Eucharist Holy Communion Mark chapter 14 verses 12 through 26 Learning about the Sacrament of Eucharist teaches us that when we eat the body and drink the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we know what eternity tastes like. When the Feast of Passover was near, the Lord Jesus Christ asked two of his disciples, St. Peter and St. John, to prepare a place to celebrate the feast. He told them they will find a man carrying a pitcher of water and to follow him. St. Peter and St. John did just as the Lord Jesus Christ told them. The man took them to the house of St. Mary, the mother of Mark, where they prepared for the feast. This is when the Lord Jesus Christ started the sacrament of Eucharist, that is, Holy Communion. He took the bread and broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, 
This is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to the disciples to drink and said, This is my blood. This is what we do in every liturgy as the Lord Jesus Christ taught us. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. John chapter 6 verse 54. The sacrament of Eucharist is very important. When we partake of the Holy Communion, we will have joy with our Lord Jesus Christ and live with him in heaven always. When you partake of the Holy Communion, 1. You should stand still and praise the Lord Jesus Christ with the deacons singing hymns. 2. Hold a handkerchief under your mouth. Be very careful not to drop the holy body from your mouth. The priest is the only one who can touch the holy body with his hands. 3. Sip the holy blood from the spoon. 4. Drink water after the Holy Communion. Lesson 6. God the Creator of Everything We learn that God is our Heavenly Father. God loves us so much and God created everything for us. We see God in everything around us, in all the amazing wonders He created. God created the whole world. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. The Holy Bible says, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made. Psalm 33 verse 6. Our God is amazing. Our God is a very smart designer. He created everything in perfect order. God created the sky, the sun, and the many stars we see at night. God created the plants, trees, and fruits, and vegetables we eat. God created many kinds of beautiful birds, birds of different colors and sizes that fly in the sky. God made the sea, rivers, and oceans. God made all the amazing creatures of the sea. He created colorful fish, dolphins, and whales. God created these creatures to live and breathe under the water. God created amazing animals, small animals like puppies, big animals like elephants, tall animals like giraffes, and funny animals like monkeys. Every animal is different in their own special way. God created people to look like him. Every part of our body is perfectly made to do something different. Eyes to see, ears to hear, mouth to eat, and speak, and nose to smell. God created people to enjoy all he created because he loves us. The Holy Bible tells us about God. God gave us the Holy Bible. It is God's word. Through the Holy Bible, God speaks to us and teaches us about himself. In the Old Testament, God spoke to many people and they heard his voice, like Moses and Noah and many others. In the New Testament, many people saw our Lord Jesus Christ, the incarnate God heard his voice, and saw the amazing miracles he did. God is the creator of all things. He alone is worthy of all our love, praise, and worship. The memory verse is, O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. Psalm 104 verse 24 Memorization The first hour of the Egbeya Prime Matins, Psalm 66. God shall pity us, and bless us, and reveal his face upon us, and have mercy on us, that your way may be known on the earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples, O God, give praise to you. Let all the nations give praise to you. Let the nations rejoice and exult, for you will judge people's inequity, and guide nations on the earth. Let the peoples, O Lord, give praise to you. Let all the peoples give praise to you. The earth has yielded its fruit. God our God shall bless us. God shall bless us, and the ends of the earth shall fear him. Alleluia.